Hello everybody, I'm Nick and uh, I messed up. Recently, I made a video on a .NET 9 upcoming feature, which is search value supporting strings. And I showcased that and I actually made a pretty big mistake. The video was not only lacking information, but it was also not showing the true power of that feature. After reviewing the feedback, I wanted to make this video to address all that and actually show you how cool this feature is because as someone who has a series called Code Cop, I do want to hold myself up to the same standards I hold everyone else. So in this video, we're going to see what the search values feature is again, just to recap the previous video and see where I messed up and actually show you how amazingly performant it is. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay, so what is the search values feature? So if you remember from back in the day, this was actually a .NET 8 feature and it allows you to do extremely efficient operations, search operations on byte arrays or character arrays, but really what you do is you pass a, an array, a primitive, and you convert it into a search values. And then behind the scenes, that object will be very efficient with how it allows you to check for occurrences or indexes of said parameters. And in the beginning, I showed you how you can use it for uh, detecting whether a string is base64 or not based on characters. And that was, as you can see here, very, very efficient. We went to 1.7 nanoseconds from 31 with a naive implementation or 17.4 with a pretty efficient character array implementation. In my previous video, what I did is I showed you how we can use now search values with strings as a parameter, which wasn't supported before. And we can even have like ignore case comparison. And I showed you how we can have an array of words, create a search values object of string, and then check different parameters to see whether they're contained or not within an array. And immediately, I should have actually done this already, but I didn't, and I'm very, very sorry. Many people asked, okay, but how does this compare to a hash set? Because you have an array of unique characters, so wouldn't that perform maybe better or worse compared to a hash set? And actually, just to recap, this is what we have with the search values on a string. So you can see that contains with the search values is much faster than contains with an array. But what happens when you have a hash set? Well, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a hash set containing the exact same words over here. And I'm going to add the benchmark that does the exact same thing as the search values and the array, but using the hash set. So that would look something like this. So now we have the word, so we have the contain, same thing as everything. And I'll go ahead and run the old benchmarks. Now, while this is running, I'd like to let you know that we just launched our Easter discount on Dome Train. So until the 1st of April, you can get 25% off any course, 15% off any bundle, which is already discounted by 20%. And for the first time ever, we offer a 10% discount on our Dome Train Pro plan, which gives you access to all of our courses. So check the link in the description and invest in your learning on Dome Train. Okay, so results are back and let's see what we have here. And as you can see, and as you might have guessed already, basically with what I did, the hash set is performing exactly the same as the search values. I just showed the same thing twice and I actually didn't even show the value of having the search values object with the string in the first place. Now, what's amazing about putting out those videos is that everybody can watch it and Microsoft actually does watch my videos quite a bit. I know many teams that do, I know many people who do. And one of the people who watch these videos uh, is Stephen Tobe. You know him from his annual blog about performance. So Stephen reached out and he was like, well, Nick, you, you messed up here. Let me explain to you why this is wrong. And I'm so, so glad he did because Actually, the real performance benefit of having something like this is insane. So what did Steve say? Well, Steve said that basically what I showed previously is the same thing as using a hash set. So I'm not really showing anything of value here. I could have literally shown a hash set and you'd get the same value out of this video. The real purpose of having a search values object on a string is to check if one of its values can be found in a way, way longer sequence. So in a search value subtype string, you want to see that if any of these values I'm passing in are contained in a very, very long text or a read only span of character. So basically a string or a read only span of character. Now to get a way, way longer piece of text to actually demonstrate this, um, what I'm going to do, and thanks to Steve for actually providing this code, uh, is we can get a whole ebook, which I don't know if you can see, but this is the Project Gutenberg uh, ebook of the complete works of William Shakespeare. So 
It's long. It's almost as long as um, last year's .NET performance <laughs> blog by Steve. And what we're going to do in this benchmark is we're going to have that string as the haystack where we have an extremely long piece of text and then we have the needle array with three parameters over here, diligence, moons, and conveniently, words that could occur within that piece of text. And then we make a set values based on that needless array, again, ignoring the case, ordinal ignore case, and we have two types of benchmarks. We have this benchmark, which basically iterates over the text and then checks to see if the offset of that piece of text starts with a needle value. So we iterate over them, we for each over them, and then we have the ordinal ignore case comparison. So basically detecting first occurrence of any of those words. And then the alternative is using haystack, which is again, that big string and saying, take that as span and then index of any needle search values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this benchmark now and show you what the difference is. Okay, so results are back. Let's see what we have here. So as you can see, index of first array three milliseconds, quite long. You would notice that in a request, but search values, exactly the same functionality, 25 microseconds. So we're talking orders of magnitude faster with search values. That is the true benefit of having a search values of type string. Now, these are just some random words. I do recommend you do your own tests and you see how that would change your own code. But this does make way more sense and the use case now makes way, way more sense to me. Now, Steve said something else as well, which is very interesting. One question you might have is why wouldn't I just search for each string individually using index off? And the main answer is, well, you don't want to have to pay for the performance of checking for all of them if one of them can match really early. Effectively, search values are always going to be or try to be as efficient as they can for a specific use case. And that's that. I want to bring this up because many people asked in the comments and the hash set aspect wasn't even that important. The mistake there was I didn't really show you anything. That's the real benefit of having search values on type string. Thank you so much for watching. As always, keep coding.